Hello, everyone. I'm very excited today to have Will Wine, the CEO of Granite Shares, on our channel, where we will be sharing his insights and experiences of the market. And I'm sure it will be extremely helpful to many investors that are watching this interview, especially in a market like the one we have right now, where a number of individual stocks are flying high. So, Will, I really wanted to thank you very much for your time. And it's great to have you on our channel uh, once again. Thank you, Andrew. Really good to be back on the channel and good to see you. So I remember that in our previous interview, you mentioned that the market could go higher in 2023. But first of all, were you anticipating that the market to have a new all time high based on the uh, past market cycle patterns? And uh, if so, how long do you think this rally might be able to last in your opinion? It's slightly unusual in the sense that I think if you'd asked most people, could we be at an all time high in a market? where we have interest rates you know, at the highest level they've been for many, many years. I think at the beginning of 2022, at least, when the market started repricing, I think that would have seemed impossible. But here we are. And the reason that the, the market has done so well, in my mind, is because the earnings have been really good. In other words, this market is a market that's been backed up by fundamentals. And you've seen the large tech companies in particular, but earnings across the board being positive, broadly speaking. And this has happened now for the, the last few quarters. So while companies are meeting or exceeding earnings expectations, you know this is really what's driving the market higher. Of course, people will point to interest rate or expectations of interest rate cuts this year. And that, and that is important. But we are talking about, I think, a level of you know, interest rate cuts that perhaps are less than, than people might expect. But certainly, I don't think the market really needs them. That's the, that's the bottom line is that you know, companies seem to be doing well, the consumers hanging in there, and the market's driving higher. You're saying that you are anticipating the Fed fund rate cut this year, I assume. And the second part that I felt that was interesting is that you, you think even the Fed fund rate cut will not have much of an impact on the economy? Or do you think it's going to run higher or it doesn't matter that much because it's going up based on the fundamentals? Yeah. So, so firstly, I'd, we, I'd be in the camp of you know everybody thinking that the first rate cut will come in June of this year. And then I think we might get one or two more rate cuts kind of towards the back end of the year, depending on how the economy is going. What, what I'm saying is that's already priced into the market and really you know, one or two rate cuts from where we are is not going to make a massive difference. What will make a big difference to the economy, Andrew, is if people think that rates are dropping materially from here. So in other words, if we're going from, let's say, 5% to 2%, or, or even below, that makes a big difference in terms of the financing for people you know, wanting to finance a new mortgage, for example, or any kind of loans. But I think from 5% to you know, 4 half or something is not going to make a huge difference. So on the FOMC meetings, they're, they're saying that, as you said, they might be cutting the rates in June, but it will be a very small amount or percent. But do you think that this rally that we're having since it's not being you know depend on the fed fund rate that much do you think this rally that we're seeing is a real I would say healthy bull run that's happening for the next decade? Or do you think that we're seeing a bull run and might be seeing a major crash before we see an actual healthy bull rally? I'm not in the camp of thinking that we're going to see some kind of imminent crash. I think that you know we are in a bull market. How long the bull cycle lasts for, who knows? Um, it's impossible to predict. I think that one good sign of the market continuing at least for you know the next sort of one or two years would be a broadening out beyond just the Magnificent Seven or the largest sort of mega cap tech stocks. So look to something like the Russell 2000, which has obviously gone up this year, but not in the same way as the S&P or the NASDAQ. So I think once you see small cap companies um, or the small cap indexes like the Russell start to appreciate um, and maybe even outperform the larger indexes such as the S&P or NASDAQ, that's healthy for the market. But I think we need interest rates to come down a little bit more before that really starts to, to take steam. But for now, the market's healthy. I don't think, you know, when we think about a crash, you know, we have to ask ourselves, what's the catalyst? You know, what what would be the catalyst to drive the market into some kind of crash or decline? And it's very difficult to see what that is. You know, we're at full employment um, from an eco economic perspective. The consumer is still doing well. 
you know, GDP is increasing, earnings have been good um, across the board. Yes, there are geopolitical causes for concern around the world, but none of them have dethroned the, the market as of yet. So it's difficult for me to really sort of point to, you know, what would be that thing or what areas of the market to cause concern um, that would drive the market down or force us into some kind of crash scenario. You just mentioned that you think the bull rally might last two or three more years. You know, for someone like me who is a retail investor, I've been seeing, you know, NVIDIA, SMCI, AMD, TSM, ASM, all these, these stocks like going to the moon. It's, it's rising like crazy. And I personally am a little bit worried about a pullback. I think pullback will make me feel comfortable. But as you were saying, do you think that even if there is a pullback, you still think that these stocks might go higher and higher uh, as the market keeps going up another couple or three years? Yeah, so I mean, absolutely. I mean, we have, as you probably know, we have a two times leveraged NVIDIA ETF, the NVDL, which has you know, been an incredible performer in the market and really is now, you know, I, think, I think one of the ETFs that people look at as a barometer of retail sentiment. So the last NVIDIA earnings, for example, you may remember there was a lot of talk from people about NVIDIA being overvalued and, you know, earnings again, at what point do, you know, do they miss expectations on the earnings front? At what point does the stock come down? And even before the announced earnings, I think out of the 40 odd analysts that cover NVIDIA officially on Wall Street, I think everybody had a buy with a higher price target. And there were only two at neutral. In other words, there was nobody that was suggesting to sell NVIDIA. And I think what I learned over the the earnings call for NVIDIA, and clearly the company, again, blew away expectations and, and rallied again on the back of it, was that there were a lot of investors I talked to that said something similar to what you just said, Andrew. They said, look, NVIDIA last year, for example, after, you know, again, they've outperformed on every earnings call, the NVIDIA stock did correct. And in the you know Q4 of last year, there was a point where you know the stock corrected event from roughly 15%. So could that happen again after the earnings that we saw? Yeah, of course it could. But that's not the that's not the question. The question is, do you believe that NVIDIA as an enterprise will be a bigger, more valuable company in say five years' time or even 10 years' time than it is today? And if the answer to that question is yes, then buying a video today clearly is something you should consider. Now, as we know, typically the path you know for any you know market or any stock is not just all the way up. There are peaks and troughs along the way. And if you get a pullback in Nvidia right now, um, or you know in the next six months, that very well could be healthy and allows people to to get in at a lower price or buy more at a slightly lower price. But again, the key consideration is not the price today. It's do you think that Nvidia is going to be a more valuable company in X amount of years time? And I think the overwhelming answer to that we had on our calls and things over the the earnings was that people felt that NVIDIA was going to be one of those companies that was going to be a lot more valuable in a few years' time. And it wasn't something that, you know, if you call a bubble scenario, the converse is true, right? It has to be the case that this company is going to be worth a lot less in five years' time or 10 years time. And and I don't think that's the case with NVIDIA. And I think there's a lot of companies in the market that right now sort of fall into that category where the growth is still good. Even if you're not an AI company, even if you're even if you're meta, you know, for example, you know, the growth in the company is still really strong despite the size. And it's difficult again to see in a few years time how that company is not bigger than it is today. I wasn't investing in uh, 1999 or 2000 when the dot-com bubble happened. But uh, for someone like you, it's the vibe that we're seeing right now with the AI related stocks going, you know, going high like 10 times in a very short amount of time. Is that something that you have felt during the dot-com bubble or is it kind of different from that time period? It's different because of one major reason that the dot-com bubble, remember, was in part, and there's obviously a lot of different aspects to it, but was in part a new technology, but also a new way to value companies. And companies I'm talking about with zero revenue or zero profitability, and just effectively a business model built around the prospect of the internet. So clearly, when the bubble burst, and people found out they were paying, you know, crazy earning multiple for a company that produced no profitability, perhaps had no chance of ever producing a profit, and, you know, even had, you know, perhaps no, no revenue, that naturally, that was a big um, sort of 
you know, bigs a wreck that really had to happen and, and was healthy for the market. I think if you contrast those companies to today, and you talk about the interest rate environment that we're in, which has already repriced a lot of the tech companies from big to small. And, you know, clearly the lesson that's come out of that is you know, again, there've been winners and losers of the interest rate repricing environment. The big companies have thrived in that environment because higher interest rates affect their business model much less and their earnings multiples much less than the smaller, more speculative companies. And so I think if we if we look back to 2000, the difference between 2000 and today is that today we actually have the vast majority of wealth in the stock market in very real companies, i.e. companies that have, you know, Billion plus of market cap that are super profitable, have growing revenues and have very secure business models or even quasi monopolistic business models. So that's just very different from the pets.com days uh, and the, some of the, the more infamous highlights of the tech bubble where you were really betting on a dream, which clearly turned out into a turned into a nightmare. In a market like this where it's been rallying a lot, personally, are you invested in the market and taking gains and following the trend? Or do you have a large portion uh, in cash waiting for other great opportunities? For me, I'm probably nine times out of 10, almost always fully invested. And my reason for that is fairly straightforward in that I tend to just in terms of my own personal money, not really worry about market timing that much and probably take a lot longer view than the majority of people. And again, I'll go back to the simple question, like, do you believe the market will be higher in five years or 10 years? And if the answer to that is yes, then it should be invested. And of course, if that means tech, tactically, you know, selling, uh, selling every now and again to raise funds to go out and do whatever you need to do with the cash to do it. But I'm not somebody that sits around with a massive amount of cash to sort of trying to, to time the market. You probably learned a long time ago that you know, you'll never get that decision right. And the best thing you can do is just to be invested. And at worst, if you're really worried about picking that time is to try and you know, average into the market um, over, over time, a period of time that you're comfortable with. I think that would help a lot of people that are listening to this video. But I think we, we got through a lot of topics here. And I think a lot of people, those are the questions that a lot of people might have had. But you know, thank you very much for addressing uh, those questions. And it was really helpful for me as well. So again, well, thank you very much for your time. I think this was really helpful for me and also for my audience. And I would love to have you on again as a guest on our channel. Uh, Perfect. Second half of of, uh, I guess this year uh, to see how the market goes. Great. Andrew, great to see you. Thank you so much for your time as always and for inviting me back on your show. And yeah, look forward to, to talking with you as the year progresses and we'll see uh, see what happens. All right. Thank you very much. Take care. Thank you.